Hello, we're here today with Marvin White, president and CEO of Aptivo Therapeutics, trading on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol APVO. Aptivo is a clinical stage biotechnology company focused on developing novel bispecific immunotherapies for the treatment of cancer. Marvin, welcome. Thank you, Craig. It's always exciting to have an opportunity to tell the Aptivo story, so I appreciate you having me. We can't wait to hear it, Marvin. Before we begin, however, I would like to remind the audience that in this interview, Mr. White will be talking about investigational drug products that have not yet been approved by the US FDA, but that are currently in clinical development. With that said, my first question for you, Marvin, I understand that you recently announced new data from your phase 1B2 trial evaluating your lead candidate, mepletamig, for the treatment of acute myeloid leukemia, or AML, which is a very serious type of blood cancer. Tell us about it, and why is it so important? Yeah, glad to do it, Craig. But before I talk a little bit about um, our announcement that we put out December 12th, let me, let me begin to talk a little bit about this very deadly disease. Um, acute myeloid leukemia, or AML as it is known, is a very aggressive blood cancer that starts in the bone. About 20,000 patients are diagnosed each year, and a little bit more than one half of those diagnosed, I think the number is roughly 11,000, unfortunately die from this disease each year. When we talk about the survival rate, we typically talk about the five-year survival rate for a disease. For AML, Craig, it's around 28%. I'm sad to say that means three out of four of the patients don't make it to year five. So as you can see, this is a very aggressive disease that is taking a lot of lives, unfortunately. So we know the work we're doing here at Aptivo to find a more effective treatment or cure for this disease is extremely important to our patients and their families. So much so that the FDA has granted Aptivo what's known as orphan drug designation for McPlatamag, recognizing this is a rare disease with unmet patient needs. This designation will allow us the opportunity to seek additional market exclusivity for a specific period of time upon approval. Now our investors love that. Now Craig, getting back to your question, regarding our results, and I have to contain myself because I'm just so excited. On December 12th, we were excited to announce results from cohort one of our Rainier Frontline AML combination trial that 100% of the patients enrolled achieved remission within 30 days. Craig, let me say that again. 100% of the patients enrolled achieved remission within 30 days. Can you imagine, Craig, what those results meant for those patients and their families and for it to occur? Remember, we announced this December 12th during the holiday period. That was icing on the cake. Additionally, one patient achieved minimal residual disease or MRD negative status. MRD negative status is the best possible outcome for an AML patient enrolled in our study because what it means is there was no detectable sign of AML blasts in the patient's blood, which potentially makes them a candidate for a bone marrow transplant. Now, in our previous trial, we've had multiple patients who went on to have a bone marrow transplant. When that occurs, this better positions the patient for a long-term cure. Although we're excited, and I'm telling you, we're really excited about most of the recent data. To be honest, we're not surprised because the outcomes support our previous expansion trial outcomes, where we saw very similar re results, to be quite frank. In fact, while meplatomeg is not approved for market by the FDA in clinical trials, We've treated more than 90 patients. That's quite a bit of patients. And we are thrilled that the data trend continues to be positive. Marvin, that is indeed very exciting. Now, please talk more about the company. How is Aptivo different from other companies that are working on bispecifics and other anti-cancer agents for that matter? Yeah, Aptivo's secret sauce, Craig, in comparison to other companies developing bispecifics, and I might add, bispecifics are really hot and growing in clinical importance right now. 
But comparing Aptivo to other companies developing bispecifics and anti-cancer agents, we think our secret sauce is due to our unique approach, which is built on five foundational pillars that drive Aptivo forward each and every day, which are to build anti-cancer agents that are one, targeted, two, powerful, three, combinable, four, predictable, and five, repeatable. Craig, let me talk about our five pillars in more detail for your audience. The first pillar is to build cancer agents that are targeted, making sure we target cancer cells while protecting healthy cells and tissue. This is the key to successful drug development because targeted therapy speaks to reducing off-target effects and increasing safety and tolerability for patients who are literally fighting for their lives. I personally believe we do this quite well. Craig, our second pillar is to build cancer agents that are powerful. Our goal is to build therapies that are potent, efficacious anti-cancer agents that can advance treatment outcomes for patients with limited treatment options. From my perspective as CEO, this is a non-negotiable. The third pillar is combinable. Look, we have to build drugs that work with other drugs because that is how cancer is treated. For us here at Aptivo, combinable means maximizing the power of our therapeutics. So they are additive to an existing or emergent standard of care, and they are targeted to minimize the side effects associated with other agents. A good example of this is the way McPlatamed combines with the standard of care venetoclax and azacitidine as we are evaluating it in the Rainier trial. Based on the data seen so far, this is occurring without increasing the toxicity burden. The fourth pillar is predictable. Our molecules are precisely and rationally designed for consistent clinical performance, and we can project that performance in our clinical studies. So Craig, please allow me to brag just for a minute on the work our research and development team is doing. You know, those folks do all the heavy lifting and folks like myself end up getting all the credit. So forgive me for giving my R&D team a little shout out. Our research team has successfully predicted the safety tolerability, and clinical activity for both of our clinical programs to date. The team told us during the preclinical phase of development, which is, as you know, the very early stage, what was going to happen in the clinic. I'm here to tell you their preclinical prediction came true based on the data we've generated to date. So thank you, Craig, for allowing me to take a, a moment just to recognize my team because it's clear these folks know what they are doing. Also, we believe e such predictability helps decrease early program risk, which over time lowers our cash burn rate. My CFO is smiling because she loves when that happens and can improve the time to market. This helps us to fulfill our ultimate mission of designing and de developing ways to help the body essentially heal itself. The final pillar is repeatable. The success of our platform and for the long-term value of the company is for us to be able to consistently reproduce drugs across various therapies. To put it in context, for such a small company, we've been able to produce five drugs. Two candidates have been advanced to the clinical phase and three innovative preclinical drugs. We believe this should serve as evidence that our Adaptier and Adaptier Flex platforms, which we 100% own, can deliver innovation at a scalable level. You know, here at Aptivo, Craig, we're not just about innovation. Although, make no mistake about it, we know innovation is extremely important in our business. We're also about delivering precision engineered, targeted, powerful, combinable, predictable, and repeatable solutions for our patients. Now, aside from Mepletomeg, are there other drugs in the pipeline? Yes, sir, Craig. Uh, including Mepletomeg, we have a total of five drugs two in the clinic, as I've talked about, and three preclinical candidates. The three preclinical candidates are all 100% owned by Aptivo and are focused on, get this, fighting solid tumors. As you would expect, the reason I'm smiling is because we are, we are thrilled with the success we're having with our two clinical candidates, McPlatomeg and 527. And based on this success, we are eager to advance our preclinical candidates into the clinic. If I could just talk about two of them, for example, APVO711 is a checkpoint inhibitor, get this, with added functionality. And then the second preclinical candidate I'd like to highlight for you is APVO442. 
This is a prostate cancer drug targeted to treat the most challenging cases of prostate cancer. Craig, I suspect like me, you have had family and friends that have had to deal with this deadly disease. So your audience should stay tuned. There's more to come from Aptivo. Marvin, what type of market opportunities exist for your pipeline candidates? Look, we are targeting very large multi-billion dollar markets with significant unmet patient needs. You know, Craig, we're small today and we understand that, but we're playing to win big. For example, AML is projected to be a $6 billion market. Looking at the solid tumor targets for 527, breast cancer is a $32 billion market and growing. Non-small cell lung cancer is a $24 billion market. Colorectal cancer is a $16 billion market. These are only a few of the solid tumor markets we will potentially pursue with 527. And keep in mind, all of our preclinical drugs are 100% owned by Aptivo. And we anticipate those drugs will play, as I've said previously, in the solid tumor multi-billion dollar market space. Talk more, please, about your clinical stage solid tumor drug, ALG APV 527. You know, Craig, I get so excited talking about Meplatigmec success that I sometimes forget to talk about our second clinical candidate. I need to take a deep breath here, Craig, because ALG APV 527 is another exciting clinical program being developed in partnership with Swedish biotech, Alligator Bioscience. The drug yielded encouraging results in the solid tumor space in 2024. You know, 527 is a clinical stage first in class bispecific antibody that is being developed for the treatment of solid tumors that are likely, likely to express the tumor antigen 5T4. Based on our preclinical research, 5T4 is expressed on quite a few, uh, quite a few solid tumors. The key to this drug is 5T4 is on solid tumors, but get this, not necessarily on normal tissue, meaning we've designed the drug to help reduce unnecessary side effects. What our targeting allows, Craig, is for us to do this with this first-in-class drug is bind to a novel conditional 41BB agonist mechanism, which is only active when binding to 5T4. Once 5T4 and 41BB bind via our bispecific technology, that is where the magic happens because 41BB activates the T cells and NK cells or natural killing cells so that they can essentially kill the solid tumor cancer cells fulfilling the ultimate mission of immunotherapy, which is designing and developing ways to help the body heal itself. You know, other companies, Craig, have tried to utilize 41BB because it is really a great target, but some have been unable to manage the liver toxicity issue, which is very common when you target 41BB. So far, keep your fingers crossed, but based on the phase one trial results, we believe our R&D team may have figured out how to utilize this great target without triggering the negative liver side effect. So let me talk a little bit, Craig, about the clinical highlights of the 527 phase one trial. You know, based on the phase one clinical data, this investigational drug appears to be safe and tolerable with no signs of liver toxicity in subjects to date. Although this is something we will continue to study and monitor as development continues. But in the trial, 58% to be exact, achieved stable disease. If I can just talk about a couple of those patients. We had one patient, a colon cancer patient, that maintained stable disease for six months. And then we had a second patient, a breast cancer patient, that remained stable, get this, for more than 11 months. So we know 5T4 is a well-known tumor antigen, which is overexpressed in multiple solid tumors, including breast cancer, non-small cell lung cancer, and colorectal cancer. But the key to this target is it is limited expression. I mean, the, the expression is just very limited on normal tissue. Now, I believe personally 41BB is a great target if and only if you can figure out how to manage the liver toxicity issue. As I said before, quite a few companies have been unable to manage the liver toxicity issue. Fortunately, based on the data thus far, it appears our team may have figured it out. 
I believe 41B is a great target for this drug because the way the team actually designed it. 41BB, it only activates the way we designed it in the presence of 5T4 to stimulate immune cells such as T cells and NK cells. These are the cells in the body that attack cancer cells. Now, I'm smart enough to realize that some of your listeners, this may sound like mumbo jumbo. So I get that. So so, so for those listeners, Craig, who may not have the scientific background to understand what I've just highlighted, here's another way I would like for them to think about it. This drug is designed to shine a flashlight on the cancer tumor cells, which are sometimes difficult for the body to recognize. Once that light shines on the cancer tumors, the cells in the body that are designed to kill tumors, such as T cells and NK cells, due to this flashlight effect that I'm describing, can now go to work to kill the cancer. That's why, Craig, I personally refer to this drug, first in class mechanism of action as magical. Turning now, Marvin, to the people at Aptivo, starting with you. I understand that you bring deep big pharma experience to the company from your time at Lilly. Talk about that and talk about some of the other particularly noteworthy experiences that your team brings to the table. Craig, thank you for acknowledging my Eli Lilly Pharma experience because it's been very helpful to me as president and CEO of Aptivo Therapeutics. For such a small company, we are fortunate to have a really strong management team and board of directors. Our team experience and expertise include our board chair, Dr. John Niederhuber. You know, John is a former director of the National Cancer Institute. Our chief medical officer, the leader that is currently managing both of our clinical programs, Dr. Dirk Hubner. He has over three decades of academic and drug development experience, including senior roles at big pharma, such as BMS and Sanofi, to name a few. So we know we have the experience and expertise to lead the company. So Craig, really appreciate you asking the question. Now, Marvin, final question, but it's the most important one. What is the essential value proposition? In summary, why should investors take an interest in Aptivo? Craig, when we begin to look at our business from an investor perspective, I believe we have to think about it differently. Just looking at the data from the McPlatomeg trial and the phase one data of our 527 solid tumor drug, you can see we are on the verge of building something really special here at Aptivo. It is my understanding that investors are always in search of that needle in the haystack company or that unique diamond in the rough company. I believe an informed investor, Craig, could make a strong argument given our recent accomplishments in the clinic and our current market cap, unfortunately, that we fit that unusual description. You know, using our proprietary Adaptier and Adaptier Flex platforms, we've been able to innovate at a scalable level. For such a small company, as a reminder, we have five candidates, two clinical and three preclinical. So it's not out of the question that we would be a growing interest to big pharma. That's why, Craig, I would encourage investors to take a strong look at the work we're doing here at Aptivo. Thank you. Thank you, Marvin, for sharing your amazing story with us. Uh, it's my pleasure, Craig, and I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to tell your audience more about the Aptivo story.